guys, this is Pants of Mice 36. And today we're going to be doing the painting and weathering and finishing on this Revell T80 UD, which stands for Improved Diesel. I didn't show you guys the construction of this kit because it was just boring footage of me gluing piece after piece after piece together. And there weren't really any, any like, difficult parts that I need to show you guys uh, that were wrong in the structures or something like that. Um, it was all just pretty easy. There were a few parts of the instructions where parts were numbered wrong and stuff, but it was obvious uh, what part it actually was. So I'm not going to show you guys any of that boring stuff. And we'll go on to the good stuff, which is the painting and the weathering. Uh, the kit, not bad actually. Uh, downsides though, it's got these link and length tracks, uh, which are not really the best thing ever, like you can see in the corner there. Mm -hmm. There's like these pieces that kind of stick out at the end. I guess that's where like the uh, track pins are attached between the track links. And the corners like that, it should be kind of straight between them, like where it meets under the wheel. Uh, but since it's a link and length system, it's not um, like bent between them. It's just straight, so it's not exactly lined up. Uh, that's not very good, but it's it's pretty easy to like hide that kind of with mud and stuff. Same thing on the other, on the other end. Uh, there's no sag on the top link, but you don't really need that because, as you can see, you can't see it at all unless you flip the tank upside down. And it does give you like individual pieces for the spots around like the uh, drive sprocket at the back of the idler at the front. Uh, the machine gun here is not bad. It could use like some photo watch pieces and also like a belt of ammunition coming from the uh, this am ammunition holder uh, going to the gun would be pretty nice, but they don't have that. That's okay. I added some tarps on here. Uh, Storm was talking about how he did it with milliput and stuff. I couldn't find I couldn't find my milliput, but I used the um, the way he talked about like using tissue paper and stuff instead with white glue. And I used it basically to cover up the awful oil drum or fuel drum on this side because it wouldn't let up at all. And also just kind of uh, on that side right there just because it fits in there. And there were extra track lengths, so I've got some on the top of the turret there, and some kind of in the back area there. Uh, so the kit's not that bad. Like, I thought it was going to be awful, but um, the fit's actually pretty good, except for a few spots where it just wouldn't line up at all. Uh, the gun is actually pretty nice. Like, there's a, there's a seam on the side, but it's not that bad, and I kind of covered it up pretty well. Uh, inaccuracies, not exactly sure. Like, I'm pretty sure it's not actually supposed to have the grenade launchers on the side there. I'm pretty sure that was the U model, not the UD. That's why I filled them. Uh, filled the spots where they go in, but I'm not exactly sure. My reference photos for uh, the camo pattern that I'm going to be painting this vehicle show no grenades. And also, like this, uh, I think it's the exhaust thing on the back here for like the turret motor or something, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it's this part here is supposed to face directly downwards. That's how it shows it on the box art. And I'm not exactly sure like if it's supposed to be like that. I can't really see it in pictures because all my pictures are from this side of the tank. So, I don't know. But, uh, not bad. Looking pretty nice, so getting on to the painting. Now the camo pattern that I'm going to be painting my uh, T80 is this one here. Uh, basically what it is, it's pretty simple but a little bit interesting, I like it. Uh, it's got basically Russian green everywhere except for parts where it's rubber or uh, something like that. Pretty, oh, it's rubber along the turret here and all that. And the fronts here, I'm not exactly sure what other parts where it's uh, black, but yeah, it's basically rubber, kind of gray-black. On all the parts you can see here that are shaded in dark uh, gray. I think that looked pretty nice on the um, T80. I'm going to do some weathering stuff, and I kind of want it to look a little bit clean because I don't think these were ever really used in service. Like, these were mostly just put on, like, border wash and stuff like that. Like, I got reference photos for this camo just sitting in a concrete pad and not weathered at all. Uh, so hopefully I can kind of recreate that and make this uh, T80 look really awesome. 
the colors I'm going to be using for my T80 are uh, Tamiya uh, XF67 NATO green. Might add a bit of kind of yellowy stuff to it to make it seem a little bit more Russian. But uh, and then also some rubber black XF85, which is a new color from Tamiya. Uh, it's it's kind of like black but a little bit more blue. So and it's supposed to be really good. And that's going to be for like the rubber parts, the rubber armor there, and the front and along the sides. That's mostly rubber pieces, I guess. And then the black, I'm going to do a bit of pre-shading, hopefully. And when I went out and bought these two uh, paints on my modeling meet, one of the guys gave me some kits. <laughs> Different guy from last time. Got a 1 to 70 second. Uh, Dragon from Bar. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, then there's a, a Crusader Mark 1 or 2, 1 to 48th from Tamiya. Uh, nothing really to say about that, it's just the kit. Hopefully, I get to build these soon. And also, a. That's a bit big. A Porsche Tiger from Dragon again. Uh, it's got DS tracks, but I do have a Ferdinand with uh, Indy Links, so I might use them. I'm not sure. Uh, this kit's looking pretty nice. And T55 from Tamiya. Yay! This kit looks awesome. Uh, he already started did, like the the road wheels on the hull and stuff like that. But other than that, it's unbuilt, so hopefully I can do a nice job on that. Looks pretty awesome. I know some guys out there have done kind of like kits like this, T62, something like that, so hopefully I can kind of learn some techniques and stuff. And also, T55 has been used by lots of armored forces, like I guess Egypt and I don't know, I can name lots of other countries. Uh, so hopefully I can do some interesting camo patterns. Because if you haven't noticed, I rarely actually do the camo pattern that's on the box. I always do something else that's like, I don't know, like a, um, a rare camo or something like that that I saw on Google Images or something. Because it looks, uh, I find it looks nice and also that my model's different. Because if you build it like it is in the box, exactly, there's probably somebody out there who has the exact same kit as you. And that would be quite awkward if you, like, met each other. But, um... So I usually do something else like uh, different camo or markings or something, so plenty of options to do this and hopefully I can do a nice job. Got a metal gun barrel in there too. And some extra kind of like detail parts from other kits that you just kind of put in there. Uh, so yeah, that's nice. So I have quite a f number of kits now that I have not paid for. <laughs> uh, so big thanks to all my friends who have supported me and given me free kits. Still don't have a Canadian one though. Hopefully I can get one of those soon. So now let's get on to painting this T80. Here you can see the effect I've achieved by using some pre-shading with black and XF59, oh sorry, 57. Uh, I use the XF57 because it's a, kind of a yellowy color, obviously. And when all of drab fades, it doesn't really turn white and pale, it turns more yellowy. So I did that on like the top parts of the tank, as you can see, and then along the sides, the sides of the turret and the sides of the uh, these rubber parts here, and the fuel drum and stuff like that, as well as the front, the front and the rear, which is where the black is, to add some shadow effects, and also kind of on the underside of done some black just because in case you can see down there I want it to look black and dark like shadows so hopefully this uh, effect shows through my coat of uh, green for the main color so I applied a coat of the uh, the green NATO green and it definitely showed the shadows the black areas but the yellow but the yellow high areas like the highlights and stuff like that uh, you couldn't really see them so what I did was I mixed this with a bit of XF57 
which is the color that I use for the pre-shading. And then that gave me a good highlight color, and now I'm going to go back and do a bit of post-shading in areas with the NATO green again. You can see I have taped off areas like around there, uh, the whole area of the turret here, sides of the fuel drums and stuff, other areas too. Uh, basically not the top of the main gun. And these side things along the turret, the rubber plates. And also one will do along the sides of the turret a little bit more. So here's the tank. I uh, did a, a bit of post shading, I guess you could say. Uh, you can't really see it now that I've uh, kind of put some wash on. You can still see it in real life, but not on the camera. And I put some washes on. I used the uh, AK wash for uh, US modern vehicles. It's like a brown one. And I just kind of put that everywhere. And in a few certain areas, I used the track wash, like on the engine deck area, which is a bit thicker and darker. And then I put I painted like the uh, the fabric cover for the gun mantlet there <laughs> with uh, like XF60, XF59, and like a few other like raw umber colors. Painted it yellow because I've seen pictures of like that this weird beige color. And I'm gonna be masking off the areas that are rubber and painting them rubber to get some discoloration on the uh, turret and also a few parts on the hull, just like different areas that might be. I don't know, bleach more and others, something like that. <clears throat> I'm using just a little bit of uh, blue-gray paint. And I'll just kind of rub it on. Here you can see the areas that I've done the uh, rubber colored paint on. Uh, the rear of the side panels there and along the bottom around there. And then the front of the side panels, kind of like the uh, mud guards I guess. And these two pads on the front. Then also around the turret on both sides. I just did that with a uh, regular low tack masking tape. It's not normal masking tape. It's like a Bit really unsticky kind. Uh, yeah, so basically all I have to do now is do the tracks and the other tarp at the back by the turret. For the tarp on the rear of the uh, of the rear of the hull, the engine deck, I'm going to be using these three main colors. This is like a primer red color, uh, raw umber, and raw sienna. For the the gun kind of uh, fabric cover and the other small tarp on the front uh, right side, I used uh, just like a few beige colored paints, like uh, I think these two, along with the raw sienna. So this, is, this one's gonna be a little bit more red. Next up, I'll be painting it with a coat of the raw sienna. And now I'll be putting on a coat of the red primer color. Now I'm applying a coat of the track wash from AK Interactive. And lastly, I went back over the tarp with a coat of the, the base brown color. I'm pretty sure it was 
uh, raw umber. I went over with a coat of raw umber. Now I have applied, uh, to me, uh, just uh, flat black uh, over the tracks, along with the tracks that are like spare tracks in the back there and on the turret. And then I will be applying the AK Interactive Track Wash just over them as a thick wash. I've also been applying a bit of dry mud from uh, MIG Productions over the parts that are rubber, so like along the sides there, on the front, and on the uh, rubber parts of the turret there, just to make them seem a little less like a pure, clean black, a little bit more dusty brown. Now I shall be painting the wheels with, uh, to me, a rubber. Which is the same color that I used for all the uh, side panels and stuff. On the wheels, you can see the post shading a lot uh, clearer than other parts of the tank. I don't really know why, but it just only showed up here. The parts tank I had to go over with a, uh, well, the black showed up, but the lighter colors didn't have to go over with actually a lighter tint. But here, the, uh, the yellow that I applied made a nice effect that you can clearly see. And so here is the tank after I have applied some, I applied the track wash, and then I applied some pigments, a dark earth pigment, and then I dusted over with a uh, dry mud from MIG pigments, or MIG, MIG Productions. And so I got a nice dusty, uh, but still a bit clean uh, kind of look on the tank. On the front here too. On the other side of the tank. And on the rear. So applied the same mixture of pigments on the rubber parts on the side of the turret here, just to give them a little bit of a dusty look, because they were looking a bit too clean before. Here is the finished tank. It's all done. All I did since the last shot was add some dull coat, which toned down the pigments, uh, and then I put on a little bit more dry mud on the wheel area because it was mostly gone because of the, the dull coat. But you can still see the dusting effect on the uh, lower part of this. Uh, rubber plate here, same thing up here on the side plate, as well as on the front. And on the sides of the turret here, there, there are rubber parts. Um, but other than that, I didn't do anything else. So this kit was a really nice build, um, even though it's quite an old kit and doesn't have very many uh, detailed parts, and it seemed like it wasn't going to turn out very well. Actually turned out quite nice. Um, it comes with a few spare track links and stuff like that. You can add as detailing too, but you could buy some stowage and stuff like that just to make it a little bit more realistic. Maybe some photo watch too, but still it's not that bad. All the dark washes kind of make the details pop, but even though there aren't very many of them, still it's not that bad. So I don't know if we get this kit for like a really good price and just buy it. You know, it's not that bad. So up next I'm going to have some shots of it, and uh, yeah, so guys, if you like this video, you could leave a nice comment, subscribe, like, something like that, I don't know, just support me in some way, and uh, yeah, that's it, so thanks for watching guys, this is Panzer Meister 36 goodbye.